I'm Jerry Andrus. Uh, I'm very interested in how our human brains work, and I'm standing inside what I call Box Impossible. And if you'll look, maybe you'll see that there seems to be something wrong with it. Here is a picture of just ordinary fluffy clouds, and now I'm going to spin this trizonal space warper, and I'm going to have you stare right at the center of it, for 20 seconds, you keep staring right at the center of this trizonal space warper. Now we're going to show you that still cloud picture again, and you'll see that it looks like it's boiling. There's nothing moving about it at all. It just looks like it's boiling because you've been staring at the space warper disk. Got it figured out yet? Here's another one. This uh, represents two large brass nuts. When I move them, they look like they're moving independently. Now, I have a straight tube here. I'm going to push this straight tube through this nut. And you'll see that it looks like it has to bend in the middle to go through the other one. You see, the straight tube looks like it's bent in order to go through the other one. Now, here again, your wonderful brain has just shown you something different than what it really is. This is made out of plastic, and you are looking at the inside of this. A wonderful brain interprets something different than it actually is, but it doesn't mean that it's made a mistake. It, it took the information it had, and it did its best job. Here, watch this. Look, it's not a box at all. I was just standing in the corner of this framework, and you can see it has no resemblance to a box at all. And your wonderful brain interpreted that picture on your retina as a box. From the Boston Museum of Science, SciTech Today on NECN. It has happened again, another accidental discovery leading to a scientific breakthrough, a material that cleans polluted water. Joining us live from the Museum of Science Boston is nanotechnology correspondent Kareen Tate. Thanks for joining us, Kareen. Oh, uh, happy to be here. So how did this come about? Well, in 2005, a student in Paul Edmiston's chemistry lab, a girl by the name of Colleen Burkett, was working with a very fine nanostructured glass powder, trying to find a chemical detector for explosives. And she was experimenting with this powder, adding acetone to it. And she noticed that when she added acetone to the mixture, it swelled up, expanding to many times its original volume. And poor Colleen thought she'd made a mistake. So she showed the response to Dr. Edmiston, who had a hunch that this unusual reaction action just might be useful in some way. And it turns out that the tiny pieces of glass in this powder are actually complex nanoscale networks of molecules. And this model demonstrates what's happening with the network at the molecular level. You see, normally it's in this compact, collapsed, tension-filled state. And it's hydrophobic, so molecules of water cannot get inside. But molecules of carbon-based pollutants, like pesticides, can get in. They expand the, um, the network, letting it uh, swell and expand. They release the tension, and molecules of the pollutants can get in. And another way to show this idea is watching how a dried up sponge expands and swells as it absorbs and sucks in the water. But unlike a regular sponge, the glass powder can't absorb any water. It can only absorb the chemical pollutant. And we actually have a video of Dr. Edmiston in his lab demonstrating how the glass powder could be used to clean up an oil spill. What I have here is a beaker full of clean water which I'll make dirty by actually pouring unleaded gasoline onto the surface of the water. Here Dr. Edmiston is pouring some gasoline on top of clean water to simulate an oil spill. He adds in the glass powder and you can see it absorb the gasoline, swell and clump up on the surface in a gel. He then skims the gas glass mixture off the top and filters the water to get the rest of the glass out. Now he's ready to test the results. Select the tap. It's clean enough to drink. 
Very interesting, Corrine. Uh, how do they dispose of the, the gel once it's absorbed? the, the that's, pollutant? That's a great question and that's one of the remarkable things about this glass powder is that it's reusable. Just like you use your hands to wring the water out of a sponge, you can use heat to wring the pollutant out of the glass powder. That way you can safely dispose of the chemical pollutant but use that same glass powder again and again. And are they actually using this technology? They are. They've tested it in several sites in Ohio where some dangerous chlorinated solvents have leached into the ground, polluting the groundwater. We did a little animation showing the groundwater cleanup. Let's take a look at that. Time ago, chemicals seeped from this factory into a groundwater reservoir and remain there, a constant threat to the town's water supply. The researchers inject the glass powder combined with iron nanoparticles into the polluted layer. The nanoglass expands as it absorbs the pollutants, and the nanoparticles render them harmless. All righty, Corrine, we are out of time. Thank you so much for joining us from the Museum of Science in Boston. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. And join us every Thursday morning at this time for SciTech Today. You can also log on to the Museum of Science website, mos.org.